super high. Never been able to sing it. Hello, this is. Um, yeah, this is Thursday. Oh, yeah. Vinyl. It's not Thursday, it's Wednesday. Oh, okay. Oh, I keep <laughs> saying Thursday, but it doesn't really matter. Well, is it? Yeah. So, Thursday, Wednesday, fucking whatever. This is Black Album, Metallica, 1990 something, too. 90. 1990. 1990. Mm -hmm. So I guess this is the answer for the white album. <laughs> yes. And, um, and um, so where were we? Where were you um, when this album came out? Well, it, it we was did a few weeks ago. We did um, Nevermind, Nirvana's Nevermind, mm -hmm. and it was actually came out the same year. Is this 1990 or 91? 91, actually. Well. One year later than Nirvana's. So, pre pretty much the same uh, era. Uh, and in Mexico, we were, I was 16. 16? Yeah. So, you were 16. So, we already had met, and um, I was with my band. You were with your girls' band? No, I no? didn't have a band. Not yet? Mm -mm. No, not yet, no. So, what do you think about this album? Because you were Metallica fan already, I was Metallica fan already. Yes, you know. I knew Metallica uh, at that time, I knew Metallica, I knew Master of Puppets, and so from Ride the what Lighting, year did I you knew uh, Kill Em All, I knew uh, Master of Puppets, yeah, and so so Justice for right. All, and my, I was a big fan already. And so, we were expecting this, I think, and Justice for All, all of those albums were out in the 80s, yes. so I didn't know Metallica in the 80s. So I knew Metallica like from one year, all of it together, oh, right. <laughs> and then I knew all And that was just before this one, or like in 88, Probably 89? was a few months before this album really? came out, and I knew all the big fans were waiting for this album for five years or so already. Uh, yeah, That's Unjustice 80. for All, I think was It was out. 88. And 1998 was a, the and then previous the Garage album, Days, this, the, the 89. Garage, but it, Garage Days was like a cover album, yeah. it was not original music. And so when they came out with this album in 1990, a lot of the, the metal hits uh, were expecting. A lot of the metal hits, like older than us, they dismissed Metallica already in Unjustice for All because in their own mind it That's was crazy. already too commercial, <laughs> <laughs> which wasn't. But uh, he had, I had a um, Unjustice had a, a tune called One that we actually covered it at some point yeah. as a duo, and this one uh, was nominated for a Grammy for a Grammy famous uh, Lost Against. Jet Tool. Tool on the metal category, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. No. But the point was like a lot of the metal heads saw Metallica, oh, now the they Grammy. are at the Grammy, they're not one of us. So these guys are already sold to the media and to the devil. <laughs> so they decided not Metallica. And, and well, at that time, I didn't care shit what they thought about it. I thought they were great. And of course, there was a, a metal program on the radio, uh, and they were going to play the full album. Yeah. So we were expecting at night time. So we, I think we were you, me, Cesar, and yeah. the other guys waiting for the program to the start band, yeah, to, to hear the the to hear this the album, single. the single, which was um, Enter Sandman. Enter Sandman. But actually, they well, this guy, the radio. DJ was uh, able to play a few more songs because he had the album and he played Salvatore and he actually didn't know you know Salvatore had like a, a pause like a yeah, silence yeah. he would cut it there and um, I loved it from the beginning and you had your doubts right no I didn't have you, a doubts I did actually like okay. loved I loved I loved ah, you like this one you didn't like Load and reload. Load yeah. and reload. I had problems. <laughs> so yeah. This one, I was. You like I this really one, yeah. I really loved it. 
the ones who didn't like it, I think, was Cesar the Romer, because he was older and he knew Metallica from the 80s, and he was like, nah, nah, I think this is too. In Mexico, we say fresa, which means mm. like too, like bland, yeah, kind of thing. Like, yeah, for doesn't yeah. have translation, yeah, but polite. it means like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, so <laughs> very polite way yeah. to say they they didn't like it for the old generation. I think Metallica lost. I think I'm not. I'm bad at the statistics, but I'm just yeah. calculating. <laughs> it lost I like the first generation of his own fans, and he gained like the triple the amount yeah. of a new generation. We, we we were 16 year old. We were not as cynical as the 25 year olds, and uh, so we were more open to new music and. This album wasn't as heavy as Master or Rider Lighting or any of those. But I disagree. I, I don't think it's the right word heavy. It wasn't as, as fast. But it was probably heavier, you know? Those. Um, no, it's, it wasn't as aggressive. It didn't have so much complex uh, riffs. Uh, this this uh, um, Enter Sandman, the main riff, is very simple. And yeah, that's but it's not uh, but very metal. How you know? can we? Yeah, that's not we, very we should, thrash metal. Yes, I agree. But uh, tell me about that they sounded like with this album. I mean, they still sound like pretty unique, you know? Uh, they, oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, so the, and yeah. heavy sounds to me, like, I mean, obviously, Sabbath True and all that sounded like Black Sabbath a little bit. Even the reef, the. the, the uh, Enter Sandman Reef is slower but heavier sound to me. S yeah, sound. It's, but it's 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 an album that is was already. Um, I think they got a producer for the first time. No, no, for the first time. Well, but yeah, but and at that level, yes. At Bob that Rock level, and, and a and producer that was in another yeah, in style of music. Yeah. So he convinced them to do things very to sound differently, big and to, sound to sound big, big to maybe take a little bit of the distortion, maybe slow down a little bit certain, like sad but true, I think, originally was really fast, and that's the slowest, like it's really uh, heavy, slow type of thing, so, and and that was to us, I think it was just a great album. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it, I, I knew Metallica since I was like 11, because of my brother, so I, I had been a uh, Metallica fan since Ride Lightning, and um, so which was '84, so didn't disappoint. Uh, and to me, obviously, this album uh, went on tour, and for the first time, Metallica went to Mexico to play five nights at this massive arena. It was the first band doing that. Palacio de los uh -huh. And we went to see them, and I cried like a little baby. Uh, did you? Yeah, I cried when I saw them for the first time, and um, and it was it was uh, obviously a very important piece for me because I was we were in the middle of uh, my you know the first band I had with my brother. I was inspired by them. I mean, it's not a secret if you've been following us for a while. You know, Metallica has been like a, a huge influence in our career. Um, and then uh, I think when we became a duo, uh, all of this, you know, is part of what we are now. Yeah. Somehow it's somewhere, you know, it's somewhere. But this album was very important for the two of us, I guess, musically speaking. What's your favorite track? Uh, the, for a moment was obviously was Enter Sandman yeah. when it first came out and then I got sick of it because I listened too much, too much and I think then then was sad but true right uh, but I must say that's not an anecdote on those gigs they did in Mexico City because it was the first time they came to Mexico City and as a matter of fact during the 90s a lot of bands came to Mexico City for the first time yeah so in the 80s it was a desert uh, city for bands that came from from another uh, countries mm. so it was truly a treat to know that your favorite band that you listen to the radio 
uh, American or English or whatever, it was, was gonna come. the first time yeah. like, it was like a dream come true, you know, they're coming. And so it was just like, they're coming to this, they're gonna be, they're gonna be standing in this land, yeah. <laughs> so that sort of thing. And so we were so, so excited. Um, and it was so much, it was sold out, all of these gigs in Mexico City. It was the first time this Palacio de los Deportes sold out a band of, of uh, it, I don't know, thousands of people every, every night. 20,000 every 20, night. 20,000 people every night. And that was small back, I mean, that was big back then, it's small now, because now it's they do now. like yeah, yeah, the they stadiums. Do stadiums and, yeah. But the important point here for us as, as city, Mexico City kids, that loved metal music and alternative music and were not buying into any of the mainstream pop music and any of that it was just an statement for us to see wow these guys they had no uh, pr in mexico at all there's no social media no way they're going to be played on the radio except at 4 a.m in the morning with a with a a DJ that is completely alternative and just playing that music for the crazy ones that stay at that time to listen to this. There's no TV show they're gonna they they are going to promote this. So these guys and all these metal bands they were able to come and they're still able to come to Mexico and play huge places. So and well, Metallica came, is one of those rare cases, right? Yeah, they I mean, still play in stadiums after. 30 years? Yeah, but now they're, they're legendary. At that time, they were legendary among the us, among the ones who loved metal music, yeah. but not mainstream, nothing, nothing to support this, to, 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 to make sure the gigs were sold out. You know, they uh, went sold out, I think, within the hour. Yes. And uh, when they were announced. And you know, it was, um, I remember another uh, anecdote. They sold out five nights. And previously, you two had gone to Mexico for the first time as well, Mexico City, and played there just a few months earlier. And they sold out the four nights. So, and you two was a mainstream band. Everyone could go and see them. But they couldn't sell more nights than Metallica. Metallica I'm sold not more. sure. I think yeah. you two sold a lot. No, no, no. I think they sold the I same. remember exactly. Because Metallica fans, they were like, oh... You know, we we sold out more tickets on YouTube. You know, that was like a little bit of a stupid, silly Chinese the YouTube joke. ticket was expensive, Probably, like yeah. twice because I really Probably. wanted to go, but I definitely couldn't afford it at all. It was too too expensive. They always have a like but big I'm saying that just in, to um, show production and stuff. I'm just mentioning that just to show how important it was for kids like us that we weren't a band, that we didn't have any radio support, and we knew. We weren't going to have it, and we still like a, a duo, Rod and Gab. We don't, we don't belong to those uh, platforms, right? And um, so it was great to see how a band without the same uh, baggage of you know of, of, uh, media behind them was able to sell the same tickets mm -hmm. or more or whatever. You know? Yeah, that show. So the drama continues because we, I think, we bought tickets for the third night or so. And now we knew, nowadays you know that those days for Metallica, they were the toughest years in their career. They were facing a lot of alcohol, and especially James Hetfield from Mount had a pr problems with alcohol, and they just were having a super good time. They were very busy, super successful. Like, it's how can you overcome success? And we didn't know. So at that time when they came out and played, uh, all of a sudden, uh, James uh, Hetfield started to speak in English really, really quick. And then he said, oh, you don't understand the folk. And that's something people understood. <laughs> 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 then they didn't like it. And, and I think that's the worst people you can play to as metalheads in Mexico. You know, that's the worst. They or they love you or that you're in trouble. So, these Metallica guys started, they start to, to keep playing, but the guys in front, the, the big fans, start to throw them to the band, start throwing them these sort of like explode little like fireworks. Like fireworks. Yeah, and not much security back in the day. Not right? much security. Yeah. So then you got like poor Jason, you start like 
<laughs> jumping from from yeah, all over the crazy. stage and everybody was like so and then I think James was was still a little mean you know it's like ah fucking whatever and it was just even and more they left and then the stage and people started to scream like that. at this point the full arena started to scream Pulero, which means yeah. like fucking asshole fucking asshole like thousand twenty thousand people <laughs> and then we're like oh no don't do this to metallic <laughs> was just like so nervous yeah. and we stood all of us 20,000 metal heads just looking at the stage it was empty they left and it was silent all of a sudden nobody is there to say a word this is half of the gig yeah and then the, the promoter came in and said oh no, please <laughs> please uh, uh, stop throwing uh, uh, fireworks to, to the band they need to continue playing and blah 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 and i think somebody backstage advised me i advised to them go with the mexican flag do mexico mexico and everything will be fine yeah and that's exactly what and happened they, they came in they were smart enough to say oh yes mexico <laughs> love you and then everything came back to it was a great gig though yes it was a great great gig but at that moment it was like the most bizarre moment it was like uh, we were angry our so own like stupid, stupid stuff <laughs> i wanted to, uh, to to kill all those 20 times <laughs> it's like how dare you but well, it was um, well. Um, that's a relationship with this Metallica album. It's the second Metallica album we talk about, and probably we'll talk about others because all the uh, we're talking about all the albums that actually did something to us, and uh, somehow they inspire us or are part of our musical understanding, right? So we'll probably go through all the Metallica albums at some point. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Dios. Uh, sayonara. <laughs>